Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of This Week in Photo. It's the last episode of the year coming your way next. This is Twitter. Hey, welcome back to another episode of This Week in Photo. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson. Joining to me, joining me today, joining to me, joining me today are two of my friends, uh, photographers. One is a videographer um, who does some amazing work. And another one is a YouTuber photographer extraordinaire who also does amazing work. And these guys have agreed to come on to, to grace us with their presences for the last episode of TWIP of the year. Matt Granger in the middle of your screen there. Matt, uh, welcome to the show. What's going on there? You and I, you and I have chatted a lot over the last couple months. Uh, you know, yeah. What, what's going on? Introduce yourself. Give us your little elevator pitch of who is Matt Granger. Oh, I normally just scream in elevators and tell people I'm, you know, afraid of confined spaces. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say you did better on that intro than I did on our last meeting. Well, because you, you, were, you called the show by the right name. You were operating <laughs> under duress, so we could talk about that a little bit. <laughs> I think you did it as good a justice as I could hope for. I People probably know me from YouTube. I'm a travel photographer. I run photo tours, which apparently Americans find difficult to understand me when I say the word tours. And photo workshops, shoot for clients, and get to hang out and chat with cool people like you too. Awesome. Well, cool, man. Well, welcome to the show. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. I want to pick your brain about this travel stuff that you do. And I know you've worked out a lot of secret little hints and stuff. So we're going we're gonna to talk about that and get into the nitty gritty. Speaking of travel, Mr. Lee Herbert is also on the show. Lee, welcome. Thank you very much. It's good, fabulous to be here, and um, yeah, good to good to be back. Yeah, it's good. To, it's good to have you on again. I want to. So you travel a lot. You and I had a little chat earlier this week, and you're doing a lot of stuff, right? You're traveling around, and yeah, how is that possible? Like, what do? You, plus, you got a new kid there over there. So how do you? Yeah. How well, are, he, <laughs> Well, he's, I mean, he's, he's, he's three and a half, so he's not that new anymore. It's, you know, he's, well, d- well, you can't doesn't return have that him. new kid smell. The yeah, receipt, doesn't the new receipt doesn't anymore. work anymore. You can't return him to the store. So, <laughs> Oh, I tried that within a day and it's already that, 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 that they weren't accepting that. Yeah. yeah. Don't leave him at the fire department. So, so what, give us, give us your elevator pitch, man. So what, what are you working on? I know you're video centric for the most part, but uh, give us yes. your, your pitch. I will, I, I will slightly correct you. I'm not a videographer. I'm a filmmaker. And the main cool. difference be that, between that is a decimal point in my invoices mm. um, or a couple, if I'm lucky. So um, what I do is uh, my main bag is I run a production company called Capture Inc. But in Melbourne. Melbourne, Australia. Uh, we do you know, corporate videos for brands and things like that. We're starting to work on some documentaries for film festivals and some TV stuff, which is very exciting. And in my other walk, line of work, I suppose, is I am a Final Cut trainer and a video trainer. So I run workshops mostly for photographers and corporate clients, teaching them on how to improve the quality of the video work that they're doing internally um, Very themselves. Cool. Very cool. Well, we're going we're gonna to touch on that a little bit as well. Um, but before we before we dive into all that, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, you guys are, well, let's start with you, Matt. So you're doing some stuff over on your very popular website and YouTube channel, um, mattgranger.com. You've got a couple things going on, some, some tours coming up and also some workshops mm-hmm. and stuff. You know, tell us a little bit about those before we dive into the show proper. Sure. Uh, so I just launched three new tours for early 2019. We've got, uh, Japan in March, Laos in April, and then Mongolia for June. And they're all filling up nicely, but ha- happy to get some new people on board as well. And the big thing I want to remind people, I've got, what's the date? 26. 26. So five days to get involved. We're doing in the future, man. <laughs> um, it's based on New York time, though. So you get a, a gimme on that one. Um, we're doing a big end of year giveaway with thanks to B&H Photo who are helping out. We're giving away a camera or a trip to New York or someone can win a place on my tour to Laos and all kinds of equipment. There's like nine grand up for grabs and it's free to enter and everyone can enter and it's totally random. So enter. 
That's at the win page. Very cool. Very cool. And then, and then at mattgranger.com slash workshops, that's where if they just want to go sign up, they just go over there and sign up. What's, a, what's the general length of your workshops? Is it, are these long workshops, three days, or you know, how does that go? So uh, the workshops, I don't have any listed yet for 2019, but I do normally weekend workshops for lighting, for photography. And then the photo tours are usually 12 or 13 days. We meet in the capital of the country and explore from there and get them back to the capital for their international flight. So they're normally based around so people can do it in two weeks of leave. Very cool. Awesome. All right. Well, yeah. if you want to learn more about that, over to, head over to mattgranger.com and, uh, you know, sign up. All right, Lee Herbert, what about you, man? On, in the notes here, I'm noting that you're, you just got back from somewhere, and now you're off again. So you're, uh, you're, you're, you're literally avoiding changing diapers, I think. That's, that's, that's. No, we're, um, we're actually toilet training at the moment, and um, no pun intended, it's a bit of a crappy experience. Hey! It's going to be that kind of show. I need to get some, I need to get some sound effects in this show. Uh, yeah, no, we, we were um, – I was in um, – I was in Cupertino, uh, oh, seems like a lifetime ago, about a month ago. Um, I was teaching at the Final Cut Pro Summit there, which was which was just amazing fun. Mm -hmm. um, then, because I'm an idiot and I didn't plan things well, I flew back to Melbourne and then flew to Israel uh, to do some shoots for this documentary that I'm working on and had about five days of meetings and just hanging out in Hong Kong on the way back. And then... At the moment, January's not entirely confirmed, but February's looking like um, Singapore and New York and Arizona. March will be Shenzhen, and I'll be in Vegas for NAB in April, and then possibly late April, Jordan and Israel, and I think that's it so far. That's, that's, see, that is perfect. That's, that's a perfect segue. <laughs> that's a perfect segue into the topic of this show, which is travel tips, right? You guys, both of you, are running around the planet and over the past five or so years you probably circled the globe many 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 times mm. and in those trips around the planet i'm sure you've you've had some you know some some bad things happen some good things happen you've made a lot of lessons so matt granger let's let's, let's i want to start with you and let's yeah. just start from the beginning so part of this part of this whole sort of show the impetus for the show is is selfish because Twip is selfish. It's all about me. So it's <laughs> good. I'm just being honest. This is 2019 is honesty. No, no. You but can just text me, buddy. You don't have to <laughs> organize a whole show. It would have been so much help. easier. Uh, no, but seriously. So the you know the the first thing that you do when you when you finally decide that I'm going to go on a trip and you buy a ticket, and the first thing you do mm -hmm. the night before, hopefully more, many nights before you travel, is pack. Right. And you got to figure out what you're going to take. And packing for photographers is much different than packing for, let's say, non photographers or other people that don't have the things to worry about or don't have a mission on the other end to accomplish. Especially if you're traveling internationally, there's not a whole lot of room for, oh, man, I forgot my X, Y, Z thing. So so yeah. how do you approach that matter? Are you, are you structured in that you just have like this? checklist in Trello or something online that you walk through or do you just know in your head what you need to bring or you keep bags packed at the ready at all times? How does it work in the in the world of Granger? Actually, surprisingly, I do have a couple of bags kind of packed, but that's mainly because I live in New York and storage is limited. So <laughs> luggage needs to be utilized as a storage space. Yeah. Um, so it for me, it's a little different probably for everyone, but it really depends on the nature of the trip. So if I'm running a tour, actually, I don't have that big of a, a gear requirement. But if I more and more, I'm now trying to tie in multiple things in any trip, especially if it's a longer one. So if I'm going, say, to Iceland for two and a half weeks and I'll extend it to three and a half weeks and then also try and do some client work there, try and get... I've been doing a series of the last couple of years called Field Tested, where I do a really in-depth review of uh, a couple of pieces of equipment through the year, and that starts to add up. So then there'll be the gear that I need for shooting, and that really depends on the job. Sometimes it could just be two cameras, two lenses. Sometimes it's drones and all kinds of stuff. But then if I'm filming, it's also the stuff I need to film myself and then all of the backups and it, it actually it really adds up quickly. Yeah, I was going to say, I can't. Yeah, just just 
talking about that because I think about that and when I when I travel and I'm I'm not doing anything near the level of what both of you guys are doing but when I travel I want it's like my camera bag is going with me got to make sure I get everything that's essential into my camera bag so if my luggage gets lost the mission can continue with what's on the plane with me that's mm-hmm. that's my mindset but then Matt you're mentioning like oh well drones and lighting and all this stuff you're not taking that on a plane with you so how how do you manage that do you check that stuff in and and aren't you nervous you know checking that in yeah, I, I, you do get nervous for sure, but still the critical stuff I'll take on board. So if it's a little drone like a Mavic or something, I actually do take that on board. And it depends where you're going, but often you need to carry all your batteries with you, whether you want to or not. They won't let you check them in. Yeah. Um, so in terms of gear, flashes, anything with not too many moving parts, tripod, light stands, lights other than the batteries will go into check-in. But then, yeah, anything that's critical for the first couple of days will be in my carry-on, along with uh, you know the essential changes of clothes if I need something in particular. Yeah. Um, to be honest, that's the main reason that I'm loyal to airlines now is to be able to you to get to a high you know what do you call it? like a membership Status. level. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't want to use that word, but yeah. <laughs> now that I'm important. Yeah. Um, you know, even if you're flying the cheapest economy ticket, it means that you can check in in the business class lane and they rarely care too much about your luggage. So often my carry on will be about the same weight as my check in. Wow. Wow. And, and Lee, what about you? When, you? when you're packing, you're running around all over the place. And I would imagine from a from a videographer filmmaker, excuse me, standpoint, <laughs> move that decimal <laughs> point from a filmmaker standpoint. Your the stuff that you're carrying is much more extensive in a lot of ways than what a still photographer oh, would, be, yeah. would be carrying. Yeah, How do you manage that? I remember we talked to, what it was about a year or so ago, and you had this. I think it was this think tank bag that was yeah. that was long enough to put a body in it or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can ship yourself in it, right? Yeah. So, like, how do you manage all that? So, well, well, there's there's lots of little tricks that you can do. So, first of all, I was going to say, uh, you know, Matt's bang on where try and if, if you're going to be doing a lot of travel, just do a bit of research and find out which airline alliance is going to work best for you, where you live and all that kind of stuff. And, and stay with just one alliance and get status. So, for example, I just got, because I've been doing so much flying this year, my Oh, I probably shouldn't put numbers and stuff up. Um, <laughs> duh, Screenshot um, it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I just put up my, I just got my gold status with Star Alliance. So I now get an extra bag for check-in. I get to use all the, all the, all the stuff that Matt was talking about. So that definitely helps because they don't give you as much of a look. Having said that, um, I'll give you, I'll give you a little story. So I was traveling, um, I was in New Zealand with my, with my wife and my son about a year or two ago. Yeah. We would have been about one and a half maybe. Um, and in Auckland airport, as you go to fly out, so you've already checked in, you're now going to immigration as you walk in on either side, there's a little lady with a scale waiting there to weigh people's carry on. And I was there, you know, I was visiting family, but I took a lot of my camera gear cause we do that. Yeah. Um, and I was, I was filming some stuff as well. So I, I, I can justify anything. And the lady goes, Oh, let, let's just weigh your bag. And I put the bag on and she goes, Oh, it's, f-. and as she says, it's f-. The, the, the thing just keeps going up. And so the limit is seven kilograms and mine was about 18. And she looks at me, she looks at my wife, she looks at my son, and she goes, it's probably full of baby stuff. You guys just go ahead. So <laughs> my yeah. first tip is is if you can get a two-year-old to travel with you all the time, that's quite useful. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but there's other complications. So um, what I would say in terms of weight is, is and particularly now, like, Qantas and all the airlines in Australia have gotten ridiculously strict in the last month. They've said they will weigh everyone's Mm carry-on. And so I'm actually, this is something I'm having to think about a lot. So what I'm going to start doing, luckily for me, I've got shooters all over Australia. So now what I'm trying to do is I'm going to either borrow or rent gear wherever I'm going, wherever I can. So particularly lights, um, tripods, things like that. Think of, think of the really heavy stuff um, and batteries. If you can have some of those where you're going and you don't have to bring them with you, um, yes, there's a cost involved, but it's going to save you a lot of stress 
and anxiety during the travel process. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, but the, the other part of that, you know, weight is one thing, you know, and being, being penalized either, you know, by saying, Hey, you can't come or, you know, you, whatever for having too much stuff. But the other part of it that I worry about is just security. Like I would pay yeah. an extra 25 bucks if they're like, yeah, you're over. And I'm like, well, okay, whatever. I'll, I'll pay the extra fee. I'll, I won't like it, but I'll pay the extra fee. But what I worry about is some rogue TSA agent or whatever the equivalent is in the country that you're flying out of going through your, your crap and taking stuff out of there, you know, and you, there's, you really have no recourse. What do you, yeah. why have you yeah, what do you, is it is just is that just Matt? Is that a risk of doing business? Is or is there some safeguard against that? I mean, it is, but like I don't know. When Lee flies to Palestine, you don't want to be cashing in insurance when you needed that bit of gear the next day, right? right. It's it gets tough. And uh, and a tip: if you don't have a two-year-old, but you do have a woman in your life, uh, most airlines the rules still say you can have uh, your main bag an extra small bag like a laptop a lot of airlines won't weigh the you can take that out when they're weighing it but women also get a handbag and i've never seen a woman's over the shoulder leather handbag get weighed so that's often got mm. five kilos of my batteries in it interesting okay. um and another one and it is, I mean, in a way, it's you want to be fair, you want to be safe. I'm not saying do anything silly, but it's not really a matter of the safety of the airplane, the weight, because, you know, I'm 50 pounds heavier than either of you guys, but we're paying the same for the ticket, right? So mm-hmm. it's a bit silly, but they don't count what you're wearing. So when I see that they're weighing hand carry, I step out of line and put every camera on, put every hard drive in my pockets, put everything on me. And then I let them weigh my empty bag. I, I'll do it in front of them if I have to, and then repack it beside the scale because there's Why not? kind of it's within the rules. Yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting. That's a that is a really good tip because you know, and I, I've heard that before in various iterations where some people are saying get those those Scotty vests and just load them down with lenses and you know all that stuff until you can repack it at the gate or whatever. Um, yeah, that's, uh, uh, that, that's interesting stuff, but I, I, I still worry about, what is this? I still worry about just the, the whole security. Cause you, you know, you put those TSA locks on things and you're like, that's a false sense of security. Cause every person at TSA has a key to those. So <laughs> that's the whole point of those locks is just, you know, to give you a false sense of security. Um, but bringing it back a little bit, Lee, um, I want to have you chime in on the, the stuff that you take when you're packing. Right. So you're packing, you're getting ready for the trip. It's the night before you're sweating, you know, you're, you want to make sure you don't forget anything. We've all been there many, many times. What's your process for making sure that you have the right stuff in your, your clothing bag and your camera gear? So, so I'm not thinking about it the night before. I'm probably thinking about it a week before. And yeah, you know, as, as Matt was saying, it, it depends on the job. So, and, and I'm going to, I'm I'm sort of torn because I'm I'm one of those people like my wife always makes fun of me that if I if I could pack the kitchen sink I would pack the kitchen sink <laughs> like I, I I'm I'm one of those well let's bring this just in case kind of people yeah but you can't be like that so so think very carefully about the job and think about very much in terms of are there things that you can use that are going to have multiple uses mm-hmm. so you know. As much as like I'm a prime snob, I love my prime lenses, I love my fast primes, but could a zoom do the job of three primes? As much as I want to take my primes, maybe it's a better idea to just take the zoom with me. Yeah. You know, yeah. so 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 things like that and and you've got to be really hard with yourself and go <sighs> I need to take only what's required for the job. Um and, and, and again I mean we're talking about air travel, but then the opposite goes when you're not doing air travel. Like I had a, a job where it was it was a five hour drive away, so you know packed up packed up the truck, and it was a game of Tetris to get everything in. I'm pretty sure the truck drove like that because mm. I put I put C stands in there. I put you know four sets of lights in there. I put two truck pods in there. I put you know. See, yeah, there was barely enough though, room Lee. for that, me. That scares me. That's like all your eggs in one basket. Because when you say that, what my brain immediately goes to is I had some friends that used to pack like that, like for short trips and load everything into a van or truck or whatever. And then the van gets 
stolen or vandalized or broken into now well, all the crap's yeah. gone you know yeah so, but, well, but shit see, happens uh, but you yeah, can't but, but, hire uh, three cars yeah. to split it up yeah, and exactly. also I, I i grew up in south africa so i'm i'm paranoid already so yeah. you know I, i'm always thinking about that kind of stuff regardless i'll never leave the stuff in in the car overnight you know if 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 we're going to be having lunch i park the car somewhere where i can see what's going on with the car you know you it's one of those where you don't want to live in fear but also don't be silly and don't kind of go oh well, everything will just be fine so take precautions but don't live in fear is kind of what i would say yeah yeah be smart about it hey in the chat uh craig stampley one of the twit pro members says uh singapore airlines is his favorite airline do you, each of you have a favorite like and have you flown singapore before Matt? Yeah, Matt, why don't you take it first? Uh, yeah, I think I've flown them all. Singapore's definitely up there for service and food and lounges and everything. Um, my personal favorite is probably Cathay because they seem the most lax. Well, they're good at all that stuff, and they're the most lax on Asia found, and they have direct flights from New York to Hong Kong and, well, to, to most big cities, which is nice. Um, yes, yeah, so that's probably my favorite, Lee. Um, well, my first favorite is Air New Zealand, um, just because at first it was a little bit of, uh, you know, loyalty to them. But they are a fantastic airline, and under that, yeah, it would also be Cathay and Singapore because, again, they're really good. But what about what about the other side of the coin? Which which ones do you absolutely avoid at all costs? <laughs> you won't fly any of them. the American ones. <laughs> And even like they American Airlines, rubbish. like like uh, American United Delta. Like if I'm in the U.S., I will fly either Alaskan or JetBlue if I can if I can get one of those two. And why is that? Why? What? What? Give me a horror story as to why you you've come to the conclusion that those airlines <sighs> oh, suck. So I know many, the answer to it. I just want to yeah, hear you so say so many it. stories. <laughs> um, look, I just I find. I find the how, how do I put this diplomatically? I find a lot of their staff are very honest. Um, if they're having a bad day, they won't hide it. Yeah. And I just the the I can I find them quite officious a lot of the time. Like they don't, you know, they'll go right. These are the rules, and I don't care if if your nose is bleeding. These are the rules. Whereas I find a lot of other airlines outside generally are quite understanding, and they're like they're reasonable yeah. where i find very often the u.s ones aren't particularly reasonable yeah, they're not you're, willing you're, to, you're not a customer to you're 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 not a customer you're an inconvenience for, for exactly yeah for like what yeah. about what about you matt you any any ones that you will absolutely not fly no matter what the circumstance uh not really you know there's some routes that i go that there's really only one option if you're getting in or out of mongolia and you don't want to go via russia you really don't have a choice yeah um, and that's probably the only airline that I've ever agreed to pay excess baggage, even though I'm always over, is that they just said, well, you're not flying if you don't pay it. Yeah. Well, okay, then fine. Let's just go pay it. And it ends up being nothing. But uh, but my probably my most annoying horror story was in Johannesburg, South Africa, on South African air, flying from the States to there and then transiting there to go to Windhoek in Namibia. And the lady at, on the air bridge just said, I know that bag. It's a heavy bag. You can't take it on. <laughs> she weighed it with okay. her eyes. <laughs> yeah, I said, yeah. Well, let's, let's that, get a scale That, that bag's be- name is Fred. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because, well, I'm like, we used I'm to thinking, date. I have a, a 600 mil lens in here. Yeah, it's overweight. But she doesn't know that. So right. come on, bring the scales out. Let's do this. And she just let the plane go without me. What? So that was fun. <laughs> Well, yeah. Lee, you need to have a conversation with some of your. your <laughs> I, I I have not been to South Africa in almost twenty years. I'm 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 just disowning that one completely. <laughs> yeah, look at that, man. Just my... winding back to the thing. That, sorry to interrupt about no, the it. choosing the right things to pack. Well, one thing I found really helps, and I'm like Lee, I tend to overpack, fearing I'll forget something. Um, I'll actually now have an idea of how many days I'm likely to be away from a charger, how much we're going to be shooting. And how many batteries, spares, redundancies, hard drives I actually need without overdoing it. So then you can just take, okay, I only need one charger and four batteries instead of two and eight. So then I can take the four bay power strip instead of the eight bay one. And that can actually add up to a fair bit of weight at the end. Wow. Wow. What and, about- and also from, from, a, from a video point of view, just on batteries, I'll, yeah. just, uh, pull, I'll just pull up some props. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. 
video guys have it way harder than us. Apart from the cost of it all, their stuff is just huge. It's huge. So, yeah. So, so yes, it's huge. So, so here's 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 a V mount battery. Um, I'll just hold it to my head so you get the scale. Oh, um, it's like an old iPod. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so yeah. for scale, so it's like a pack of cigarettes then, basically. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is, this is, this is. <laughs> no, this is... <laughs> <laughs> you got it, you got it. Sorry, it went, it went right over my head. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, come down here and say that. We can keep going. <laughs> I'll bite your kneecaps off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, fly kick to the shins, but <laughs> but what you can do is, is like so. These are made by Core um, S S W X, so they make a mini one, and this is the exact same you know hertz or whatever it is as the big one. And the thing is, these will run my lights for two hours, or they will run my camera all day. Oh, so wow. yes, they're bigger and chunkier, but I just need one of these. Actually, well, I just need two of them, and that's two days worth of batteries for my camera. And on you're a shoot. set. You're set. You don't have to worry about set. AC, nothing. Yeah, that's cool. That's it. So, so yeah, they're bigger and they're chunkier and they take hours to charge and all that kind of jazz. But the advantage is, is you, you can take fewer of them. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, back to the the whole favorite airline. My generally within the states, like you guys say, you, you know, when when possible, JetBlue. Um, I used to love Virgin, um, but you know, Virgin is no more. Um, and, uh, but I got to tell you the best airline that I've flown so far has been Japan air. You guys ever flown on Japan air? So I used to mm -hmm. I fly Japan air back to Tokyo every now and then. And it just the, the contrast of the level of service, both before you get on the plane and on the plane versus some of these other airlines that you guys mentioned, um, you know, specifically when it comes to mind is, like American Airlines, <laughs> you know, American Airlines and, and airlines of that ilk, like you said, they just don't seem to care. You go from being a customer to being an annoyance. I remember one of those last flights I took, I was doing a talk in Ohio for Panasonic, and I think I was, I was, uh, I forget the airline, they might have been American, and I fly out there, or I, I go to the gate, and I had a question, and the two gate agents are talking to each other. You guys have been here many times, right? Mm -hmm. They're talking to each other, and you walk up with your roller bag or whatever, and you stand there patiently, and they just continue talking. They won't, they won't say, oh, oh, we'll be right with you, sir. None of that. They just continue talking and until you say, excuse me, and then you get the eyes, like, yeah, can I help you? <laughs> Like, what do you want? Wait, did, don't, didn't I pay you to, for me to be here? You know, So, yeah. So, Japan Air, you don't get that. It's very polite and courteous, at least my experience. Some people Japan, may have horror man. stories, right? Yeah. Although, I will, I will tell a quick story about that. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was working on a – I was shooting footage for a photography workshop in Fiji, and a very well-known photographer who I will not name and shame on here. I'll tell you guys after the show. Um <laughs> We, I was standing in the in the line with him, and he was bragging about how he travels so much, and he's got all these tricks about getting, you know, heavy bags on, and he charms his way, and he does this, and he does that, and Is it me, no, 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 no. <laughs> could could be a lot of different people, and um, yeah, and and I was really stressing because again, obviously my bags were heavier than they should be, and he goes ahead of us, and he got stuck there for like. 40 minutes trying to argue. It was actually on a visa problem. And then once the visa problem got sorted, then it was a, a, a weight problem of the bags. But thankfully, because they were so distracted with him, myself and my mate Simon, we just walked on through. Jeez. Nice. There you go. Yeah, just carry distractions with you. That That's actually one good one. I used to be the come on and trying to cause a scene trying to get through it's the opposite if you kick up a fuss they'll just dig in it's better if you just lean in and whisper and say look it's my two-year-old son's crap and i'm really sorry and i know i'm over but i wouldn't do this if i and they're much more likely to let you off if you don't make it into a spectacle and, yeah. and i will also say you know don't don't forget these everyone's a person so I'll always be polite to people and oh, yeah. you know they're, they're just doing their job and, it's and, not always and that... easy though lee i mean when you're when you're traveling oh, oh. and you just like you just you know this is your third connection and you know you you've got 45 minutes to make the next flight and it's an hour away and you gotta get on a tram to get try, over to the other side of the airport <laughs> try doing it while you've got a screaming child and you're covered in urine trust me i know Ugh. i know yeah. <laughs> but... one out of the two is hard enough yeah um <laughs> 
but I, I my, my thing is I always try and be as polite as possible to them because you know you you're gonna get what you give give out kind of thing and 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 also it's everyone's a person you I don't want people screaming at me when I'm doing my job so I try not yeah. to scream at other people common when they're doing it common yeah. courtesy goes a long way all right well well continuing on from airlines the uh, the other piece of that is airports right you guys mm. have frequented lots of airports around the planet. What's your favorite and your least favorite? Lee, why don't you kick us off? What's your, what's your favorite airport uh, Ooh, on Earth? A, that's a tough one. Um, actually, no, it isn't. My favorite airport is Changi Airport in Singapore. Oh, nice. Because that place, they take a lot of the stuff that you would normally have to pay extra for and just have it as a feature. So there are free showers. There are free lounges. They have a cinema that plays movies 24-7. Um They've got an outdoor pool. That it's just it's Jesus. it's yeah 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 yeah. America, take note. Um, it, yeah, it's Singapore. Singapore is just they 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 just they do it right. Yeah. All right. Well, Matt, you, can you match that? What's your favorite? Shoo. Um, I have to say, a lot of the Middle Eastern countries seem to have a lot of cash to splash, so they're right. pretty well equipped. Dubai. But uh, still, I would go with Hong Kong. It's ridiculous. It's so efficient. Nice. I mean, I'm one of those first off the plane, first to the luggage rack kind of guys, and mm -hmm. the bags are almost always ready there once you get there. Wow. Even if you arrive and there's like a line of 100 people you're through in 10 minutes, it's, it's so good and worst. I don't know. To be honest, probably JFK, JFK. one of the American ones. Uh, I got. Yeah, I got to go. I, I'm from Chicago. I got to go with O'Hare, man. O'Hare <laughs> in Chicago. Uh, they, although they've done some things, and you know, last time I was at O'Hare, I had to fly through there on the way back from Ohio. It was uh, very. Ohio. They've they've done a lot to improve O'Hare, but it's still that experience of oh man, I got to go through O'Hare. I can't. <laughs> Is there, can I can I connect through like Florida or something? <laughs> <laughs> I had the worst experience with a immigration person at, because I mean, like the whole thing with, you know, you never be rude to immigration people because they can just go, right, we're not going to let you in the country. Um, and this guy, fair enough, I screwed up. I, I, I filled out a form incorrectly. Or I filled out the wrong form, what have you. Fair enough. I had waited two hours to get to the front of the queue. Oof. And he just like looks at me and gives me a he gives me a talking down like he had just found out his wife had left him or something. Like, he was grumpy and sort of sends me – like I've just spent two hours and he sends me back to the back of the queue. I'm like, oh, please, uh, please don't do this. And Yeah. So yeah. You get a little bit of power. goes to the head. All right. So let, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about camera bags and the things that you mm. – that you mm. – you know, because that, that's, that's our – you know, for I, let me speak personally. <laughs> from, from, from a personal standpoint, I have way more camera bags than I need right now, and I ordered another one yesterday. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. So need should not factor into that sentence. <laughs> I know. I will want want for sure because there's always something that you want to do. Matt, what what what's the best camera system for you? You've probably gone through many different iterations, as we all have, and you've settled on what you're dragging around the planet now. What, is, what yeah. does that look like? As I was actually going through this list of questions, I thought it's so personal because even if someone travels with the same amount of crap and travels as much as I do to the similar countries as I do, there's people who just will hate the bags I use and like their own, but it seems like the three of us have enough diversity that hopefully it'll be useful for the audience. Yeah. But I tend to, uh, well, you're right. I have dozens of bags. Luckily by moving to the States, I had to whittle it down somewhat, but nine out of 10 times I'll have my roller bag and a laptop bag that carries everything in the two of them. Mm -hmm. um, my laptop bag is a pretty big one that has, you know, this kind of space for cables, batteries, all kinds of stuff. Um, and then into my check-in luggage, I'll pack what's going to actually be my day bag, whether it's a messenger bag or a backpack or whatever. And then I'll fill that with flashes or light uh, power strips or just clothing to, to pad it out. But I've lately been using this guy a lot. Let me just put myself back up so I can see if I'm blocking myself. So just a pretty big messenger. Nice. Um, I, f I don't know. I tend to have, if I'm shooting something that needs a lot of gear, I'll have two camera bodies on. So just having a shoulder bag that will take, say, four lenses and a flash rather than having a backpack I have to take on and off works. So I can just swing it around, change lens, change lens, have batteries and cards in there. 
and that's that. But if it was like a safari or something where I couldn't realistically have my roller in the vehicle with me for the day, then I take a like a sealed backpack that I can put at my feet. Any any Matt, any uh, particular brands that you gravitate to or that you're sponsored by or anything like that? I was about to say I do gravitate, but I have to disclose uh, <laughs> I'm an ambassador for these guys, companion yeah. bags. Um, so for the leather bags, messengers, and weekenders, I use theirs. My roller, I use a Think Tank Airport Roller Derby. It's a four-wheel one and phenomenal. I've changed the wheels and handle on it once already, but mm-hmm. that was after three years of abuse that I think any other bag would have died under. And for my backpack, still my favorite is a now discontinued and relic of the past, a Carter Mini B, okay. uh, which, uh, who are they? Menfrotto make it something similar, but it's not as good. Very cool. Awesome. Lee, what about you, man? What's, uh, what's, what's your, your camera bag ensemble of choice? I see a pile of them in the back there. I think, <laughs> I, they're like gremlins back there. I think they multi- multiplied since we started the show. Well, I'm glad you can't see the stuff that's lowered down and off, off, <laughs> off camera and the stuff that's in the garage. Um, yeah, I'm also a bit of a, a bag fiend. Um, now I will disclose it. I, I'm not, I'm an ambassador or sponsored or anything, but I do have a relationship with, with think tank bag. Um, so they're just friends of mine. And every now and again, they'll go, Hey, can you do a quick promo video? And they send me a bag and I keep the bag. So, uh, you know, full disclosure there. Um, but yeah, my roller, I'm exactly like Matt. I use the roller derby cause I've found that that is in terms of size, I can fit the most stuff into that and I can still get it into the planes that no one has ever given me hassle or anything like that. Um, and yeah. four wheels are just very playful. So I, I twirl it playfully to try <laughs> and make too. it look light. <laughs> just one finger. Oh, this isn't heavy. Don't weigh it. Please don't weigh it. The photographer's fidget spinner. <laughs> it really Lee, is. Show me, your, um, show me your poker face when you're trying to lift the 20 kilo bag into the overhead bin so they don't know it's heavy. What's your look? Oh, no, just, well, you got to... You gotta squeeze the butt so that. You just... <laughs> well, what are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm five foot four, so no, I can no, no, barely I'll do reach this. the thing. So <laughs> I, I just gotta try and make sure none of them offer to help me, because then I'm then I'm stuffed. Um, so yeah, so that, that, that that's for like my camera bag that I use for most things. Um, and then again, very much like Matt, I'm in, I have a messenger bag that I put most of the batteries in because again, they're less likely to weigh that. And that actually ends up being the heavier bag. Um, so depending on the airline actually will dictate on which bag I use. So I've got the big uh, retrospective, um, which looks really cool. And you can fit a 15 inch laptop in it and all that great stuff. Um, and that's if I'm on an airline that's not too fussy. But then if I know that there's an airline that is a bit fussier i've got the signature bag which is smaller um i actually prefer the signature i think it looks nicer and i really love the clasps on it um but it's not quite big enough again if i can get something bigger onto the plane i will um just for and then for backpacks i've got a, a backlight 36 which i used to use as my laptop bag but i got called up on it about two or three times on a plane and after that i thought not going to risk it, so I don't. I don't bring that planes anymore. Yeah, is the the corpse carrying bag Frederick mentioned? Is that the logistics manager? Yeah, that's it. Do you have that back there? Is that is that on the floor? No, somewhere? no, 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 no. That's um. That, actually, that's that, that. That was that was on loan to me. So I've got I've got the logistics manager thirty, and I've got the logistics manager forty. Okay. Uh, but then when I, the problem with the fifty is you put so much stuff in it, you can't lift it. <laughs> Which was the first, like the first time, like I filled it up and then I went to put it in the car and I was like, uh oh. So <laughs> you gotta hire somebody. Gotta hire somebody. If, if you're gonna have one of those bags, have an assistant. It should have a tri- uh, trailer mount so you can just put it on your trailer. <laughs> <laughs> just drag it around. Well, what about so Matt? You mentioned you mentioned the companion bag series uh, and that and that one messenger bag that you were holding up there doesn't look like any sort of camera bag by design. I would imagine is that important to you? You know, traveling to some of these exotic locations that you have a bag that doesn't look like it has expensive stuff in it. I don't know to be honest because, and I was actually thinking the opposite when we were reminded of a chat you and I had when we met in Oakland. Yeah. Uh, when Lee said, I prefer this one, it also looks nicer. Bags are something that even the most utilitarian, I just needed to get the job done, manly men photographers still don't mind having a bag that looks cool. Yeah. Whereas, you know, having a camera that is more than just functional, they think is a bit of a, a wank. Right. But right. so 
I think these are gorgeous, and I don't think having a beautiful leather bag fools anyone into thinking you don't have nice stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. no. Well, you have to beat it up and distress it a little bit, right? Put some duct tape <laughs> on it, you know, put some fire to it. Right? Oh, this is pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty, but in some areas of the world, it's like, that's pretty, and that could feed my kids for the next six months, right? So, I mean, so, yeah, but like, Lee, the more you travel, the more you get aware of that stuff. So, yeah. same, we were, where were we recently? Probably in Oakland, you know, parking where you can see the car at all times, <laughs> yep, and yep. it just becomes the, you become aware of that stuff, and I know there is a link between crime and poverty but it's not that direct i don't think there yeah. most places i travel in the world that are third or developing world i don't feel unsafe you go to the wrong street in any city and you yeah. feel okay yeah i should mm -hmm. go back on the main road yeah target mm -hmm. target all right uh let's let's switch gears look at this there's 641 already see how quick these shows go <clears throat> and we're only like a third of the way through the questions we're gonna finish all these um i wanted to talk about booking and and how you guys manage that piece of your 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 respective businesses you know are you using travelocity expedia do you have a, a you know a person that you can just dial up and say hey i need to go to outer mongolia make it happen you know or do you handle it yourself do you sit on the couch with your laptop and book all your travel yourself lee herbert how does that how does that come to fruition for you do you do it yourself or do you have people to do it for you um, a little bit of both, actually. So I, I actually enjoy researching flights and working out the best route and, and, and how I could do the seats and all that kind of stuff. Um, it, although my wife has said after I booked our honeymoon that I'm never allowed to do that for us again. Um, but that's <laughs> so another story. Who, who booked your trip from Cupertino back to Melbourne? Oh, that was that was me, but that's because <laughs> the second one was booked before the first one happened. So the second one was booked, and then the, the, the first the Cupertino job came in after the the Israel and and Hong yeah. Kong trip. So yeah, also the Hong Kong and Israel one was with my wife and my son. If I said to her, "I'll meet you in Israel. You fly all the way by yourself with him." I would have not been meeting anyone there. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, so I, I do look, I research that stuff myself because that's something that I enjoy doing. But most of the time when it comes to booking, again, I'm very lucky because I've done quite a lot of work with a particular travel company over here. And so like I've, they've sent me out on a lot of shoots internationally. And so I've, got someone there that I can just call up and go, Hey, I've just been looking at these and these flights. Um, do these look right? And is there a difference if I book them or you book them? And then they'll tell me, you know, Hey, we can save you a couple hundred bucks or now nah, you just book it yourself. Don't worry about it. And, nice. Yeah. Nice. That's cool. See, that's, that's helpful. What about, what about you, Matt? Are you, uh, you have the same similar flow. I mean, thinking about the stuff that you're doing, like doing these exotic workshops in, in Africa and different places like that, I would imagine that you're working through a tour guide company to help you with that stuff, or am I off base? Mm, no, I, I, maybe I should be, but no, it's me. My wife also helps out sometimes, or often. Um, you know, sometimes it's just, it gets ridiculous. You're looking at a connection, say, where was I? I can't remember. I think I was in Vegas and I needed to get to Laos and it ended up, it was either like a 48 hour trip or a $10,000 trip. Oh, so, well, screw it. I'm taking two days to get there. <laughs> exactly. that's, that's just what it is. It's two options. Yeah. Um, but I tend to use a website called hip monk. Hmm. Uh, have you heard of it? Like Chipmunk that's without the C? One? No, I'm right. Um, it's hip pretty monk. cool. They, um, if you say you want to go from here to here, it shows it all as like a bar chart showing flight, layover flight, and the start and finish times on a 24-hour sliding calendar. And it'll organize it by price or time or agony, which includes like the layover times. Um, but so we'll look at that. And then if it's hotels or stuff, check. There's a couple of review sites that my wife's really good at checking the real traveler photos for me to see if they're what they say they are. But then wherever possible, I'll actually end up booking it through the airline's own website. Mm. Because when you need to make changes, it's a ball ache if you booked it through someone else. And then you yeah. call up even JAL, who are all about service. They'll say, oh, you booked this with Expedia. You need to call Expedia. Yeah. Then Expedia oh, will charge you 75 bucks. And, and Expedia owns everything. They also own Hotels.com and this and that. So. Yeah. It's um, if you booked it through the airline itself or even the hotel's website itself, although I never do that because you want the points, 
then it's a lot easier when you need to make a change, yeah. which we do. Any 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 secrets from either of you on on getting? I don't know what's the best way to phrase this question. So you know, you're, if you're booking a hotel through one of these services like Expedia or Travelocity or something, and you're trying to do the hotel thing, and they'll say, "Oh, well, this hotel right here is completely book, booked up," and then you call the hotel, and they're like, "Yeah, we got three rooms available," <laughs> or vice versa. Yeah, how do you how do you circumvent that? Is it is it best to just always go directly to the hotel or or not? What do you what do you guys think, Lee? I think start with the hotel. So so sort of start with the hotel and and see what's available. Do your homework. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it, th th that's the thing. You know, these, it's one of those you can have it fast, you can have it cheap, you can have it good. Um, you know, pick two. And in this case, it's you're going to end up doing quite a lot of legwork if you want to get the best deal, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so you need to look at like you know when I'm looking at flights, I look at Skyscan, I look at Expedia, I look at Kayak, I look at you know quite a few different ones. Um, most of the time, they're, they're all giving the same stuff, but every now and again. Some, some sort of deal comes up um but i think matt's point of if you ever need to make changes booking directly makes life a lot easier i i, I think that's worth you know 30 40 bucks a night or something like that if it's a hotel or things like that um the old get and the more i charge my clients the more i'm kind of like i'd rather pay and make my life easier so where possible um, you know, it's not like, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd like to save money as much as the next person, mm -hmm. but I, but I'm a big, you get what you pay for. So, mm -hmm. you know, if it's going to cost a little bit more, but it's going to make my life easier and I can afford it, I'll, I'll go that route. Yeah. That, yeah. that, that the opposite is what gets me riled up is when you go into a situation with that mindset Lee, and you're like, you know, you get what you pay for. I'll pay a little bit more. And then you end up getting less. <laughs> you know? Oh, absolutely. That absolutely. puts me, and, that, that yeah. drives me off the cliff right there. Um, guys, there's a ton of stuff to talk about in here. You see the notes here. I wanted to talk about night excursions. Like, do you turn the photographer part of your brain off? I want to talk about laundry. How do you manage that security? I also wanted to put in here, which is not in the notes. I wanted to talk about points and how you guys manage mm -hmm. that in these point systems and because that's a whole nother world. <clears throat> so I want to yeah. invite both of you guys back um, at some point in 2019 within the next couple of weeks, if you're up for it, to do a part two of this show where we, tackle, sure. we tackle those top topics if you guys are you know, at a location where you have bandwidth. <laughs> yeah, that. yeah, that, 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 that's going to be a challenge. Yeah. Just I want to just yeah. want to mention two little points that, that, that sort of I made in my own notes. Um, a couple of things to research that people may not think about. Um, number one, visas. Do you need a visa to travel to the country you're going mm -hmm, to? Mm -hmm. um, and how soon do you need to apply for that visa and have things changed? So, for example, um, the U.S. has got the ESTA visa, which you can apply online, which is pretty straightforward, not for all countries, but a lot of countries. They've just changed the rule now that if you need to apply for that, you need to apply 72 hours in advance. Yeah. Whereas before, you could just apply at the airport if you forgot. So little things like that. You know, do a bit of research um, and also learn a little bit about the language and the culture of where you're going. At the very least, learn how to say please, thank you, and, you know, like excuse me and, and hello. And where's the bathroom? Um, photo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and photo. I think, you know, just, just, just get, even if it's just five phrases, just learn a couple of five phrases because you'd be amazed how much nicer people are to you and how many doors it can open if you just show that you're putting a little bit of effort to learn a little bit about the language and also the culture. Like some things that you may not realize are offensive could be very offensive to other cultures. Yeah. So just do a bit of Googling before you go for stuff like that. Well, you know, I wonder, and this is before we leave this, uh, on that same topic for both of you guys, you know, there's these are these apps out now that do translations both mm -hmm. on printed form and verbally. You can say, hey, where's the bathroom? It'll speak it into whatever language you want. Have you guys experimented with those apps to do the, the real-time translation? Matt? Uh, I have used the Google Translate one, but you need a connection. And right. I had seen other ones and actually got invited by a company that made one that was – I think it basically had all of that built into a little device, you know, maybe this kind of size, that then offline could do all the translation. I don't know how it managed to detect your voice without uh, – it must have a huge database in there. And I didn't know what I thought of it, but when I was recently in Japan, one of the ryokans I was staying at, the lady had one, 
and it was actually pretty dope. And I've seen other people using them. And in some situations, it's actually an incredible icebreaker for people like, what is this little box talking to me? <laughs> and, and of course, it'll get some things wrong. But yeah. then that, again, getting people to break into laughter is a great icebreaker. Yeah. And mm. often what you were saying, Lee, trying and even if you screw up and say the wrong word that means something a bit silly, will then get them to just volunteer to walk you to wherever you're going to yeah. keep chatting with the funny tourist yeah the funny tourist with the talking box uh, <laughs> what about you what about you lee have you have you experimented with those universal translators yeah i've, I've tried google translate and you know i'll just sort of second most of what matt said um it sort of gave me another another thing that i remembered um i'll actually i'll put a link in the show notes um of a website that i find really useful it's a wiki for all the different phone contracts all around the world so oh, you can wow. just put you can just put in what country you want to go to and there's a whole bunch of information in terms of these are the carriers these are the pre prepaid things you can buy this is how much data is going to cost you this is don't buy it at the airport buy it here buy it there that website has been invaluable for me wow. for getting a sim card wherever i end up going that's cool well, yeah, that's a, that, i'm gonna put i made a note i'm gonna put that on the list of questions for the next part two of this this topic and that's you know when i talk about the cellular situation data visas all that stuff so that's going to be a chunky show mm -hmm. um i want to remind the folks that are watching this live um that you can participate in the chat we're on youtube live right now so go ahead and post your question in there and we'll get to that to the q a or listener slash watcher q a segment in just a few minutes our community manager christopher berry is in there collating the questions and copying them out into a Google Doc that we are all looking at right now. So if you have a question, go ahead and pop it in there, and uh, we'll we'll get to it shortly. So let's let's move right along, guys. So the the third part of this show is the picks of the week. We haven't. I'm reinstituting the picks of the week segment. It's one of our most popular segments on this week in photo, and we stopped doing it for a couple of weeks there. But I'm bringing it back for this last show of 2019 of 2018 and all of 2019. So you guys are the first ones to. To be able to do a picks a week again on on this week, on this week in photo, um, so let's let's dive into that. So Matt, uh, you've got a couple of picks of the week. Why don't you why don't you walk us through what your picks are? I did, and I'll be honest, I was a little bit lazy because I just put together my best and worst gear of the year for 2018 and put that out on Monday. So I thought it makes sense to do that. And to be honest, I couldn't remember if I meant to pick something I'm loving this week or. What, what the criteria was. So I just thought, let me name what I said were Perfect. the cameras of the year. No, that's so right. for the general, your average punter looking for an all around camera, something for travel, great image quality, decent price, portable, blah, blah, blah. I picked out the Fuji X-T3. It's pretty incredible. There's one or two little things, but no camera gives you everything, especially not for 1500 bucks. And a very personal one I chose as my favorite personally the one i most enjoyed shooting with not the one that i think is suitable for the whole market but was to my surprise the leica m10p i don't shoot that much i know it's a bougie choice um it's, <laughs> it could almost if i had shot with another camera that was released this year that had that mechanical interface it could have been that because it was i do love the image quality coming off the camera and the 50 mil that i was using in bhutan but it sounds really romantic but wandering around for two weeks with this beautiful you know handmade well, i don't know if it's handmade but mechanical feeling camera and the experience of seeing a great scene and physically pulling it into focus. This is probably nothing for a, a filmmaker. Um, also, but, I'm not a dentist, so I can afford one. Yeah, I'm looking at that price. <laughs> eight grand. Eight grand for that body. Hey, wow. don't kill my buzz. I'm, let me finish my romantic <laughs> anecdote. Jesus. Hey, I pay that. I pay that for a lens. <laughs> so as I. Go ahead, go ahead, man. <laughs> You're <so> sorry. <laughs> okay, so as I'm, you know, reminiscing on my wealth and how many cavities I filled this year. It was just a beautiful experience shooting it. And it was what I fell in love with, with photography. It, you know, it wasn't before I became, you know, really serious about photography before I became, it was my income source. It wasn't about just the result. It was the process of shooting that I actually loved the being out with a camera in my hand, taking pictures, 
for the joy of taking pictures rather than to get the shot for a client to do this, to do that. Yeah. And forgetting about all of the speed and all of those things and just focusing on what was beautiful to have in my hands, that camera was it for me for the year. So to all to the three dentists watching, run out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Might be a couple of plastic surgeons as well. Wow. <laughs> those, those Leica prices always get me. That is just, I'm like, is that right? Is, is that, is that $8,000? It is $8,000 for that. But uh, yeah, and and for people that love that Leica look and and the the romanticism, like you say, Matt, of uh, of Leica, it is that's a that's an easy price to fork over for those three dentists out there that are <laughs> shooting. All right, well, cool. That's those are perfect picks of the week, Matt or um, uh, Lee Herbert. What are your picks of the week? Um, so well, I, I could have had tons, but I thought what I'd do is I would uh, talk about um, a new toy. Um, I've started shooting a lot more. Um, 4k and 4k raw recently mm -hmm. which is great some beautiful footage and so on but it requires a lot of storage and it requires fast storage and um, I've got tons of solid state drives on my desk but even those are not quite big enough for some of my projects and so what I did is I've invested no, please note, I didn't buy or treat myself. It was a business investment. Yeah, um, that's in wife speak in, right there. <laughs> yeah. So just, yeah, yeah, just to yeah. clarify, Love you, you invest in tools, you buy toys. So this is a tool, yes, not a toy. Yes, this, this, this is a tool. This is a tool. Um, so I've invested in a GTEC Shuttle XL EV, um, and what it basically is is a very big box that you put lots of hard drives in, and it's a RAID array. So um, it. You, you, to the power of one, you know, you put all these drives together and they act as a single drive and they're super fast, plugs in via Thunderbolt 3. The EV part of it is it's got these two extra little bays in there where you can put sort of almost whatever you want in it. Um, I, I shoot a lot of uh, stuff with my Atomos recorders so uh, it i've got little bays for my atomus card so i just take the you know the, the the solid state that i've recorded my footage on chuck it straight in there download it straight on and away i go and i'm i'm editing in in no time wow and i mean technically i suppose they, they want to make you think that it's portable because it's got a handle <laughs> um <laughs> But it, it's a, it's it's about half as portable as the G5 Power Mac, if anyone remembers those. Uh, it kind of looks um, like that a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it does look a little bit like that. So it's about half the size and about half the weight. But that's still it's a little bit a little bit chunky. But again, I wouldn't fly with it. Um, they do make a Pelican case for it. So you know, again, if 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 the client <laughs> was paying, I would have three of these on a shoot, and you know, one would be my main one, and then two would be backups. Um, but but for now, it's it's just fine for. Um, that's editing. actually really funny because right now I'm using the Pelican case from my one as a footrest. No, look at that. <laughs> so it exists. There you go. They are so good. That's a great pick. That They're is. That is a great crazy pick. Crazy fast. Yeah. It's I need, like, yeah, I need to rethink that. It's faster than an that. SSD. I need to rethink that. Like we were talking about before we went live, I need to rethink that um, my, my storage situation for, for the new year because it is uh, – I have a feeling that there's a storm coming. Winter's coming for my data, and I need to, <laughs> I need to be ready for it. So. Can I just point out that um, I didn't shit on your choice and say how expensive it is, even though it costs as much as a like. I was just <laughs> supporting. <laughs> just making a note of that. Yeah, you, you're a better human being than me, and I'm okay with that. That's <laughs> classic. Very good. I'm more fun at parties. <laughs> <laughs> True, I don't get invited. Yeah. But on your point about the portable ones, they do also make a, a so mini one that uses SSDs, yeah, which is even more expensive but then fully portable. Yeah, you'd have to get two dentists to buy that one for you. Yeah. yeah. But data, I mean, you can't put a price on safeguarding your data. And Well, they have, but yes. Well, they right. have. Yeah. <laughs> it's they absolutely have. But, you know, I think it's an easier pill to swallow, you know, than... So like, it's, it's I mean, not, I'm, not, I'm not crapping on Leica. I love Leica. But, at, you know, the price of, a, of eight grand versus... Eight grand when you can buy other devices that arguably would do a similar job to that Leica for a fraction of the price versus something that is going to be a tank for your data... Or using that money to go on a trip or take one of your workshops, you know, would you know you gotta you gotta but, weigh but that. You, but you but you gotta admit, I, I will even admit that like is a lot sexier than than a box of hard drives. Until you lose your data, <laughs> until you lose all the shots that that Leica took, right? You're so and, much and also, more responsible. 
Yeah. yeah, and 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 also I will obviously point out that this this you know this is this is for this is twenty four terabytes, but that is being backed up every night onto two separate Synologies and a third one off site. So wow. you know, yeah, everything's on there, but it gets backed up to two places here and one place somewhere else. So Lee, is is, is all that is all that preparation for Doomsday because you're just being diligent, or have you been hurt before and you're like, this is never going to happen to me again? There are two kinds of hard drives in the world, those that have failed and those that haven't failed yet. Yeah, yeah. That's what they tell me about motorcycle riders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was actually going to say that when you were mentioning you need to get your stuff in order, Frederick. There's no backup unless you have an off-site backup. Yeah. So if he had all that great stuff and it's all in one house and, sorry, touch wood, his house burnt down, yeah. he doesn't yeah. have a backup. Yeah. So if you do that... We could even set up a little raid where I send you a terabyte and you send me a terabyte so it's backed up on different coasts or something because that's really how you want to do it is have – you need to have it offsite as well. Yep. And a 24 terabyte, and I think they go up to 80 with that mm. uh, GTEC. It sounds like a lot, but I don't know about – I mean, as a filmmaker, you're probably way more, but I can bring back a terabyte from it from one trip. I'm creating on average, like on, on this on this documentary that I'm working on at the moment, we're creating a terabyte a day. Oof. Jeez. Ouch. Yeah. yeah. Those oh, are, oh, remember oh, the days oh, when oh, remember oh, the oh, days oh, when oh, a terabyte was not even not even oh, like in the lexicon. Oh, <laughs> and, and, you, and you know what's sad? Like I'm creating a terabyte a day, and that doesn't even feel like a lot anymore to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank God for Thunderbolt three. Yeah. yeah, the petabyte. It's gonna be petabyte next, right? Is that the next size up that we're gonna to skip to? Yeah. Craziness, craziness. All right, I have a pick too, guys. So, uh, Santa brought me a nice new toy, um, and it is Ooh. this guy here, the Osmo Pocket. So I just got this thing yesterday. I've had it for about twenty-four hours, maybe thirty hours, and playing around with this thing. I when I, I saw it when it came out and I was like, you know what, Osmo Pocket, those are cool. I had a I had one of the previous edition Osmos. And for those that don't know what an Osmo is, it is a gimbal stabilized camera that allows you to do sort of, you know, fluid, albeit I'm holding up quote finger cinematic type video, stabilized video, um, in in the case of the Osmo Pocket from from the palm of your hand. So it's pretty cool. So when I saw it, I was thinking, you know what, I got this iPhone, I spent all this money on, it's got you know, image stabilization in it. Do I really need this? Plus, I have an older Osmo, so I was going to skip it. Santa gave me one, and I decided that I can't believe I didn't get this thing. It's, it's actually really, really cool and impossibly small. I was riding around and just sort of walking around the neighborhood today playing with it, and I was blown away by the footage that came out of this thing. So... But there are a couple of caveats. So the one, the, the two main caveats that I found so far, like I said, I've only had it for a day. Two main caveats are, one, the omission on launch. Maybe they'll add this in firmware, but it does not stream live to YouTube or Facebook. Like all of the other DJI products do, <laughs> this one, for some reason, does not connect to DJI. And you, you, I mean, you, this plugs into your phone the whole nine yards, so there's really no excuse for it not to not to stream, uh, I'm sorry, to, to Facebook or YouTube, but it doesn't. So that's the one, one thing that got me. And the second thing that got me was, uh, other than their sort of crazy Orwellian setup process, was the fact that it doesn't have the quarter 20 th you know, thread on the bottom of it huh. for you to connect it to something. You hmm. have to plug it into your camera and then use one of those janky phone tripod mounts to you know allow it to piggyback on your phone in order to stabilize it if you want to do that and see those two things seem like huge oversights to me either oversights or opportunity for osmo pocket version two so it's a pocket pro yeah but, but pocket i pro. mean it has a tiny screen right so it maybe does. they're not they're saying don't use your phone or is the screen usable the screen is the screen is surprisingly usable especially in selfie mode so you can frame yourself and all that but it has face detection and object detection so 60p it will, yeah 60p it will automatically frame you 4k 60p so it will automatically yeah. frame you up and stay on you no matter where the camera is which is that was the magical part for me because i'm like okay this is cool i could you know do a, as a content creator you can do a crap load of work with just this little thing that goes into a slot in your in your bag so i was blown away by that but then you know the the other piece of it are the other modes in there that 
clearly were sort of you know, appropriated from their drone technology world or the drone departments. And that's, you know, A, things like being able to do panoramas and stitch them together, doing motion time lapses and all that sort of stuff. They built all that technology into this little tiny thing that can go mm. in your back pocket. So I'm, uh, I'm still playing with it. Very I'm going to cool. do a little review on it. But, you know, right now I'm like, OK, this is this is pretty cool. And I wouldn't have bought it. Like, literally, I would not have purchased that thing. Uh, had uh, had Santa Claus not purchased it for me. Oh, thank you, Santa. Yeah, thank you, Santa. So that is my my pick of the week. All right, guys, let's dive into the listener Q and A real quick. We got a couple questions that have come in from the folks in the chat. The first question up is from Trevor, and uh, Trevor Panaki says, "In your experiences, which camera or cameras offer the best support for getting?" Um, I'm saying, I think he's going to say gear replaced or repaired when you're traveling locally or internationally. Matt, you want to take that? But uh, which camera company do you do you work with that has the best sort of repair or return program? Uh, I would hate to generalize, to be honest, because mm -hmm. out of big cities in major markets, I wouldn't mm -hmm. depend on any of them mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. If I was in Arkansas, I wouldn't expect that Nikon can get me a loaner in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, and this sounds kind of conceited, but I sometimes get really helped out of binds, but I wonder if it's because I'm a, a Nikon Pro member or a Sony Pro member or whatever, or because they know who I am and they're trying to help me out. Yeah. I, because I, I hear all the time from people like when I was in Japan in March, my 200 F2 stopped focusing and I had taken it to photograph the snow monkeys and I really wanted to use that particular lens. And I reached out to them and they got their guy in Tokyo to help me out with a loner and I shared it extremely grateful and i'm still extremely grateful but then i just got a bunch of people writing back saying i tried and no one even answered me for a week oh geez yeah. so i don't know i i really don't think there is one uh, a rental house or and again this is out of the realm of a lot of people i realize but having a backup for critical things and it could be like lee said of if my 50 prime died then i've got the 24 to 7 here i've got this camera with a fixed lens that I could use as a backup. If it's something that, if that dies, the game is over, you need a backup for it, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah you could use the Leica as a backup. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to let that go, are you? <laughs> I, love that. I, love I like that. a Leica. I like a Leica too. <laughs> uh, what about you, Lee? I mean, uh, you have, a, you have a, a favorite support company? Um, I've, I've, I'm going to try and find some wood to touch. Fortunately, I've, I've never really had to, um, get anything repaired on, on an emergency scale where I'm sort of out in the middle of nowhere. I've had buttons and stuff fail on a couple of cameras and I've just sort of sorted out when I get back. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 I again, I, I'm just going to agree with Matt and say, you know, if you're out of a major center, um, just logistically, they don't have that kind of stuff in place. So it's yet yeah, you know worst comes to worse i mean like i was a bit of a random story i was helping a friend out a couple of weeks ago actually the day after i landed back from hong kong um i was helping out a friend shoot a, a funeral of all things and there were some logistic challenges and we had to get a shot of this particular thing happening um and my camera wasn't in the car whatever i had to i jumped out and shot it with my phone wow you know so in a pinch it's just 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 get the shot you yeah. know so mm -hmm. yeah that's that's kind of my motto when i'm on location i'll omit the swearing but th this isn't a fashion show let's just get the job done so you had a question about cell phones and actually in even my sponsored highest for me highest end videos i mean it's still pretty amateur hour my field tested videos it is a mix of drones and 4k this and this and that and then it's sometimes 1080 that I've upscaled and you can't tell the difference on YouTube. And it is sometimes a phone and it is sometimes dot, yeah. dot, dot. And often you can't tell. Sometimes maybe you can, but, you know, you got to get the shot. Yeah, that, that, that's fantastic. Yeah, and I want to definitely hit dive into that in, uh, in that part two of the show because that's important because the, the cell phone technology and the, 
the the rapid development of that world is changing a lot of the ways that we do. I would argue the ways that we pack as well. Like you're saying, it's a perfect backup camera. If you're in a pinch and all your stuff is stolen, but you got your phone in your pocket, you can still do some work. You can still get some work done. All right. Trevor has another question. He says, is there a tipping point for traveling with batteries? I know at one point they were almost considered weapons and I have a ton. What do you guys do when you travel? Um, First of all, look up the policy of the airlines because different airlines will have different policies in terms of how many you can take and what wattage and all that kind of stuff. Um, Matt was saying he really likes Cathay. Cathay is one of the best. They allow you to take up to 20 batteries in your carry-on. Wow, okay. Uh, Whereas I've been on other airlines where they've been like, no, you can't take more than two. So definitely do your research. And what I try and do is I try and give myself – an hour, maybe two hours worth of grace of battery runtime. Um, so that if, you know, my battery should last, I need eight hours of shooting. I've got 10 hours worth of batteries, mm-hmm. but I don't take more than that because otherwise, as he, as Trevor says, it gets to a tipping point And quite literally, if they're in your backpack, you will be tipping <laughs> over. <laughs> quite literally. Yeah. What about it's, you, it's tricky, and Lee's absolutely right, but sometimes you just get shafted. I was flying from, I can't remember where, maybe Australia to London via the Middle East, and nothing against our Middle Eastern friends, but I have a personal rule of not going to countries where my embassy can't help me out because I tend to get in trouble. And it was my first time transiting in the airport, and uh, I can't remember. It was from one country to the next, the policy was batteries had to be carried on and mm. at the next one they had to be checked in so my luggage was transiting straight through i didn't see it i only had my carry on and i had i know this sounds excessive but i was going to teach a flash photo workshop 200 brand new rechargeable batteries oh, were Jesus. i don't know a thousand dollars and they just said well you can't carry them and you can't go to your luggage to check them in so they're going in the trash oh. Wow. wow. And what can you do? I mean, so my rule of not going, and then within 20 minutes, I was in the airport security talking to an armed police <laughs> officer, arguing, give me back my batteries. <laughs> and yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I, well, Matt, I, I've know, got a horror story as well, but I'll, and for another time. Well, Matt, Matt, I, I, I wouldn't be a good podcast host if I let this go by because you said you let, you kind of snuck this in here that you only go to countries where there's an embassy from your home country because you tend to get in trouble. You got to elaborate on that, man. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what the heck are you doing that, is, that you need an embassy to help you get out of it? What's going on? I make poor life choices. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I am... I am culturally respectful. I do try my very best to fit in with cultural norms. But this was more back, uh, you know, five years ago, I was shooting a fair few nudes in public and I was shooting books for that. And, uh, you know, there's there's some places that you will get a fine. There's some places you'll go into prison and you can't get em- ambassador support. Ooh. So, oh, you know, yeah. Ooh. To not tempt fate, I just don't go there. And if there's a chance I can get locked up for having a glass of wine on the street, why well, shouldn't be drinking on the street? But you know what I'm saying. Yeah, then yeah, yeah. there's it's a, it's a big old world, and there's a lot of places I want to see where I can have less fear for my stupidity catching up with I'm me. Put, I'm putting that on the list for the next show for sure because we gotta we gotta talk about yeah, that. There's Try, more to that story. The, I know there's more to that story. I, I felt your tap dancing in there. <laughs> All right, Christopher Berry, our community manager, says, "What's the best way to insure your gear in case of accidents or theft when traveling? What companies do you recommend?" And I know Chris is speaking from personal experience. He had he had uh, something unfortunate happen to him on a recent trip. What do you what do you guys recommend in terms of making sure you're, you know, you can't get your gear back if something happens, like it gets stolen. Your chances are you're not going to get it back, but at least you could get some restitution for it. What what do you recommend? Um, I I go. With, I've actually got like a specialist insurance broker that specializes in the film industry, mm-hmm. so it costs me a bundle. Um, but you know, for I mean, well, roughly it costs me about two and a half grand a year, and that insures about seventy thousand dollars worth of gear. But that covers me internationally. So all I have, the only thing I have to do is that if I'm going to be shooting on water, I've just got to call them up and say, "Hey, I'm going to be shooting on water next week in Galapagos Island or whatever," and they're like, "Okay, cool, we've we've got you sorted for that." Nice. Um, 
And thankfully, I've never had to make a claim, but a friend of mine who recommended them has had to make a claim, and he said they were fantastic. Like, there was no messing around, no issues to deal with. Like, within two days, he was like, yep, go to this place, go buy another one, and it's all sort of covered. They've got one for you to pick up. Right. So, again, insurance is one of those things where don't cheap out because – you i've heard some horror stories where people have gone with like the cheaper option and then when something happens it's six months to a year if they get a resolution before they get a resolution yeah it's like like yeah. like buying a really expensive car going on a road trip and then cheaping out on the tires or not getting a spare tire because it was too expensive right you want to you want to have a level of insurance matt what about you what how do you handle insurance when you're abroad so uh, a disclaimer, because I know Trevor, who's asked a couple of questions, is uh, he follows me and has probably seen me dodge this question for five years. <laughs> I always avoided it because I don't want to tell people, use this company, they've been good, and then they get screwed. Because mm. I, I'm, not a, I'm not speaking for the company. I'm not a part of the company. I have no idea. I haven't even you know read all the terms and conditions of my own policy. So I'm no expert. But... For a lot of people, in covering your gear through your home or auto insurance is the best option. If you're not a pro, you can get it. You know, a lot of my friends have home insurance that gives them accident and international coverage on their gear, and it's just over a certain dollar value. They have to specify it and give serial numbers. Um, my first year in the States, uh, so again, this is a one-off. I don't want to be done for libel, but I signed up with um, – the professional photographers of America, if you become a member, at which because you can be anywhere in the world. You, oh, what has just said? Uh, I just got I think, a pop. I think your mic just your mic just changed. Yeah, your your mic just changed. We can still hear you though. Oh, now your mic is gone. We lost you. Hello. There you Hello. are. Hello. You're, you're back. Now you're back. Uh, so you asked me what headphones I was wearing. They just disconnected and reconnected. Probably, maybe it's the insurer hacked me or something. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry about that. Um, you don't have to be American and you don't have to really be a professional to be a member of professional photographers of America association. You just have to pay the annual fee. Um, and then they have an insurer that they use that will only insure to their members. And the policy was okay. It, it was okay. I had uh, a claim with them. They paid it, but then the, I won't go into details in case I get the specifics wrong, but there was some messing around and they didn't end up, following through on what they had given me in writing they would do, and I only got kind of 60% of what I should have been covered for. So I've now moved to one in the States that's called uh, TCP. I got that because a lot of professionals uh, that I know use it, and they said the customer service is great, and they're really – upfront and clear and my experiences so far i've been dealing with cindy there she's been lovely and so helpful but our exchange so far has been me giving them money and never making a claim so <laughs> i i can't vouch for how the approval process is but like when i got some new equipment i wrote to them and said i need to add this to the policy and they bound me and insured it on the day even though it took a week for me to actually make the payment and everything they said from today that's covered Nice. Which I think is pretty great that in two hours I gave them the serial number, told them the gear, I was insured. And, you know, you pay the extra. But basing it off what um, Lee was saying, he pays for 70 grand and two and a half. This seems uh, cheaper than that. I think for about 70, it might be like one and a half US. Nice. So that's about two, two and change Australian. Australia dollars. is expensive. What can I do? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Come to New York. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say Bring that. a jacket. I'll, try, I'll, try I'll, I'll, I'll take it up with the wife. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, guys, next question. Another one from Chris. I think this one's directed at me. He says, uh, is the Osmo camera open to being used with iOS Android apps like Filmic Pro or Pro ProCam? And I'll say that uh, no. So far, my experience with the camera, and like I said, this is the caveat is I've only had it for a day or so, um, but it will only work with DJI's app, and they ship an app with it called Mimo, which is strange because you would think another DJI camera would just work with the DJI Go app ecosystem that they have already built for all their other devices, but not this one. It has its own specific app called the Mimo app, which kind of leads me to believe, which is why it doesn't support streaming to YouTube or Facebook because they haven't built it into this brand new app yet. But 
to answer your question, Chris, no, it does not. Uh, I, as far as I know, it doesn't support any other apps other than the ones that uh, that you download for it, or the one that you download, and that's called Mimo. All right, next question is from Craig Stamfley. This one's to you, Matt Granger. He says, Matt, are you ever going to return to Australia? What is going on, expat? <laughs> Oh, I've been called out. Gracious. It's Boxing Day. <laughs> Just chill your boots. Um, Not in Australia. I, uh, yeah, well, only in Australia because <laughs> Americans have never heard of Boxing Day. No, um, no. You no, got me right it's there. a Commonwealth thing. Um, so, yes. I mean, this is the first uh, Christmas that I've been in the States. Last year we came back for Christmas and New Year. Uh, I'll be back. It's my dad's... Oh, will he be embarrassed if I say the year? A big birthday for my dad next year, and there's a couple of other family things, so I'm hoping to get back for that. But in terms of moving back, I'm sure I will at some time. Let's see how long the government honors my visa over here, and it might be based on that in the end. Very good. There you go. All right, well, look up Craig Stampley when you get back home. And you go check him out. Okay. All right, next question is from Stephen uh, Valera. Stephen says, have you guys tried the 7 Artisans 51.1? Hmm. And what do you think of Chinese branded lenses? Uh, well, I'll come to the second part. I've, I've got no idea what that first one is. Neither do uh, I. I, I, don't know. Yeah. I. I presume it's a lens. I'm guessing um, it's a lens, but it's one that I've never heard of and don't use. So you want to take the second part, Lee? Yeah, so I actually... Um, I'm actually a big fan of SLR, which are based in Hong Kong. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen their lenses or done any of Is that SLR Magic? SLR Magic, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah. yeah, so I, um, I I picked up one of their lenses a little while ago during some B&H sale, and, and it was, you know, for the price, I was really impressed. Um, and I've picked up a, a set of primes from them for, for like, little cine primes. Mm -hmm. um, again, Disclosure: I, I know Andrew who runs SLR Magic. I paid for them with my own cash money, but but I, I do know the guys and they're all lovely. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know about other brands, but um, the SLR Magic ones, I, I I like what I've used so far. There you go. All right. What about what about you, uh, Matt? Any any thoughts on Chinese branded lenses? First off, I have the 1.1 here at the moment, the Seven Artisans one. Oh, you do? It's, okay, cool. Uh, ah. Yeah, it's um, it's a Leica M mount. I think they're now bringing. Maybe they have it for Sony E mount as well. Um, it's a three hundred and seventy dollar f one point one lens. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> How is okay, that even possible? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's where you, that's where you um, make up the money at. Right? Boom. Eight thousand dollar camera, three hundred dollar lens. <laughs> <laughs> Cheap tires. Um, <laughs> it's it's not bad for the money. I mean. Ugh. For the money, it's not bad. You know, the the Summer Lux is four thousand dollars for the Leica F one point four. You can get a Voigtlander one one for about a thousand bucks ish. So it's a third of the price of the next cheapest one. Um, it's not. It's probably better as a cinema lens where you don't need. You're not holding focus for ages and studying a single frame. So it's not super sharp. Mm -hmm. It's not super contrasty, especially wide open, but by about F2, it's not bad. Um, for the money, I think it's it's pretty good and the build is good. But I think people have to move past the idea of just Chinese products and no good full stop. Mm -hmm. This is it. This is a Chinese product. It My is. laptop is a Chinese product. Sims in the uh, headphones. Yeah. I mean, most elect consumer electronics that, Yes, I've had bad experiences with some Chinese products and some Chinese companies and business practices vary country to country. But I've also had shitty experiences with German and American and Australian made stuff. So, uh, again, it kind of comes down to you get what you pay for. It. If you're yep. complaining that a $200 Chinese lens isn't as good as a $4,000 German one, well, no shit. Yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> yeah. true. And that's absolutely it. You hit it right in the head. You get what you pay for. And and you know trying to trying to locate or geographically tie quality to one specific region it's not going to work you know we get stuff from vietnam that's excellent quality and stuff that's crap right so you know mm -hmm. it just it it's money it's all about money all right moving on uh next question here is from chris berry again he says how delicious was that red you poured who's pouring red was that you man <laughs> i think it was both oh, of I think you. It 
It was hey, really nice. I, was, I, don't I even was drinking my red off camera. I was making sure the camera wasn't on me. <laughs> so, no, I saw it. <laughs> so you it guys saw it. it you good. guys I don't saw even it. know what it was. Yeah, it's gone I now. I chose it because our bottle shop nearby, they, the staff write really cute descriptions of the wine. And this one just was funny and in my range, so I bought it. But no, it's nice. I can't tell you anything about it, though. It's red. <laughs> All right. Well, since both of you guys are on the show, what's that wine I have over there? There's this wine. Uh, is it called 99 Crimes or something Crimes? Have you heard of that wine? It is. A, I don't drink, so I'm sorry. I'm not. Well, good, I'm well not good okay. Here. There's a there's a there's a method to this madness. I think I want to say it's something. It's a number crimes anyway. But it, the labels are all. Most of the labels for the different um, sort of vintages of wine are illustrations or photographs from different criminals that did time in Australia. And I just googled it. And, and there's a lot crime. of those. And if you if it, you download the app that goes with it, and if you hold the you know you run the app as a camera, you run it, hold it up to the label, the label in augmented reality animates on that the label, cool. and and the the these are like from 19, 1700s or whatever. They'll they'll tell you about their crime, you know, and why they did it, and all this stuff. And so it's sort of a little you know a little Very little cool. Easter egg a Easter egg for each of these uh, bottles of wine. Okay. Sounds like an interesting way to cover for poor winemaking. It's <laughs> not bad. <laughs> it's like, oh, look at this criminal talking. This tastes like this, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> bottle's talking. Pay to no me. attention to this. Drink up. <laughs> That's not the wormwood. <laughs> but it's cheap wine, too. It's three, like 15 three, bucks three a bottle. Three stories in, you're not going to taste how bad it is. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, snob, wine snobs. I have no idea how to, I mean, I barely know how to drink wine while it's swirling and all that stuff. So, you know. No, you're just an app addict. It's got nothing to do with wine. You like it because you can download another app. Absolutely. Absolutely. It makes my choice easy because I'm sitting in, and we have BevMo here in California, um, beverages and more. And I'll go in there to buy wine. And I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing in here. Okay, that oh, one that looks good. I'll get that one. <laughs> oh, this one has an app? I want that one. <laughs> That's kind of how it happens. All right, guys. Uh, we are at the end of another episode of This Week in Photo. Thank you to everyone who participated, especially you two, uh, Chris Berry, who's holding down the chat room, and all the folks that are in the chat room participating. And if you're listening to this after, after the fact and watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up. A like all that stuff um, and subscribe to the mp3 podcast over on this week in photo dot com slash subscribe and you can make sure you get at least the audio of this show plus of course you can subscribe to us on YouTube uh, Matt Granger if uh, the twip audience is looking for where to find you I know we set up the top of the show Matt Granger dot com slash workshops and Matt Granger dot com slash win I think it was yep. for the contest any other places you'd like people to go Oh, just YouTube, but yeah, they'll find me. That's all. That's good. Yeah, you're prolific Thanks. with your. What do you have? What are you up to? Like 750 million followers right now on YouTube, something like that. Oh, I think it's more closer to a billion. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, don't be offended. <laughs> no, thank you for coming I on, man. Don't pay for themselves. Yeah, my pleasure. It's thank always you it's always a pleasure chatting with you. Seriously, and I, I hope to have you on more in uh, in 2019 if you're up for it. Love to. All right. Okay. Well, you know, we're we got to do part two of the show. So there's there's that right there. All right. Lee Herbert. What about you, man? If you want people to catch up with you and follow you, where should they go? Um, well, my website is capture.inc. So that's capture.inc. Um, C was taken. And um, on all of the socials, I am Lee Herbert. So L-E-E-H-E-R-B-E-T. Only one R in her bet. Herbert. Yeah, it um, took me a while to get that, but I got it now. Yeah. And, and and if people can at me, actually, um, I've got a, a little question for the TWIP army. Um, I'm thinking of doing video tours, like photography tours, and I'm thinking how that'll be structured slightly differently to the way photography ones go, and I'm interested how many people would be interested in doing something like that. So if people are interested or they have suggestions, just come at me, and I'm, I'm, I'm open to feedback and suggestions. Awesome. All right. Cool. And thanks to you for coming on too, man. It's been, it's oh, been way thanks too for long me. since you've been on the show. And it now, has. It was about, geez, about ten or fifteen kilos ago. Yeah, something like that. Well, now you're back in the rotation. So welcome, welcome to the flow. Good cool. to be here. All right. Nice folks. to meet you, Lee. Yeah, that's you right. too, mate. I introduced. Look at that. Twip bringing me. I connected two Australians <laughs> together. How does that even happen? 
That's amazing. We're going to end up on a wine label one day. <laughs> <laughs> My story will start. It all started when I met Lee on Frederick's show. <laughs> it was downhill from there. <laughs> oh, Find guys. me an embassy. You guys are fantastic. <laughs> oh, shit. Thank you. Thank you to both of you guys. And thanks again. Thanks to all the folks that participated in the chat, etc. And you know how we end these shows. Thanks for joining us. It is time to take that lens cap off. This is Twitter.